Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We're going to be joined by Dr. Antonio Anzueto. He's joining us here as Professor of Medicine and Section Chief of Pulmonary at South Texas Veterans Healthcare System. It's an affiliated institution with the University of Texas Health San Antonio. He's joining us to talk about the 2023 Global Obstruction Lung Disease, or GOLD, report. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Antonio Anzueto. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the invite. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and your work in uh, pulmonary care at the University of Texas. So, Mr. Howard, I do pulmonary and critical care. So I see patients in the clinics uh, several times a week. Uh, We have the clinics with the university as well as patients in critical care. So I get to see the whole spectrum of the patient from the outpatient when they get sicker, when they go into the hospital and the ICU. I told our listeners that we were going to talk about this new report by the Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease, or GOLD. Now, this report uh, provides some updated recommendations for how physicians and pulmonologists should treat COPD. Tell us about COPD and its prevalence today, if you would. Well, COPD is a highly prevalent disease. Uh, It's a disease that is estimated in the next 10 years, it's going to be under 155% increase in diagnosis. It's a disease that is changing in the face. Now we're seeing COPD in women in their 50s, young men in the mid-60s. So it's not anymore a disease of all men in the 80s. Mm. So the disease is changing and evolving very rapidly. Is it changing as far as some of the challenges with diagnosing the disease or, or treating the disease? No, it's both. Okay. It's, it's changing the diagnosis, the ability to make a diagnosis. And we recognize today the only way we can make a diagnosis accurate is to a spirometry. So it's a challenge to have an access to a spirometry. On the other side, the treatment is uh, continues to evolve as new clinical trials, new data becomes available, we are changing and adjusting the treatment based in this new information. This GOLD report makes some recommendations on how people living with COPD, regardless of exacerbation risk, should be treated first line. Can you tell us a bit more about this report and some of the recommendations? So the, GLO, the GOAL, the Global Initiative of Chronic Obstructive Disease, is a document who gets updated every year. And it's based on the information of the clinical trials that became available. So this has been the leading in the diagnosis and treatment of COPD. First, because it has proposed a unique di- uh, a definition of the disease. So we all use the same definition for the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. And this has allowed the development of treatments and interventions and alternatives for the management of this disease. For example, in the new recommendation of the document who was published uh, in November for 2023, we recognize that the pivotal therapy for COPD is bronchodilation. And how can we achieve maximum bronchodilation? Well, we have now available the combination of lone acting beta to agonist plus lone active anticholinergics in a single delivery device. So in this way, we can achieve the maximal opening of the airways of bronchodilatation for our patients. So you're talking about using these two treatments in conjunction with the standard go-to treatment, correct? Yeah, so these treatments are basically in COPD, we have to remember there are three legs on the management of the disease. One, and, and is one of the most important, is if the patient is active smoker, smoking cessation, or avoidance of any condition that have been precipitated, environmental condition, or other condition, that should be the number one. Number two is going to be the pharmacotherapy. And number three is going to be they have to exercise, they have to move uh, through pulmonary rehab, to uh, exercise at the gym, and to be able to do any of this. So it's pivotal that bronchodilation or medication kind of sit in the middle of these two other factors. That, that are gonna, the objective is going to be as they open the airways, will allow the individual to do more. It will allow the person to feel better and also to have 
less complications at an event that we call flare-ups or, or exacerbations. Was there anything in the report that recommended that no, we no longer do as far as treating uh, COPD? So the, the report emphasizes that because it's bronchodilators that do a bronchodilator has to be the pivotal therapy, emphasize that there is no room for the management of COPDs or the class of medications called lonactin beta agonists within health corticosteroids. This combination of medications can be used for years, but now we recognize that these medications are indicated for patients with asthma, but they have no role in the management of COPD. If the patient has COPD, what they have to do is receive bronchodilators, and long-acting bronchodilators combined in a single delivery device is the optimal way to deliver these medications. Are there challenges in prescribing the right medication and inhaler for people living with COPD, and why is it so important to pinpoint that medication for that patient? So, Mr. Howard, one of the big differences of COPD, like other conditions, uh, like high blood pressure, diabetes, so these are not pills. These are medications who are delivered through an inhale delivery system. So this provides a tremendous amount of challenge from the patient's side, needs to have coordination in their hands, is able to generate no, enough force to have the medication delivered into the lungs. So it's very important, not only the type of medications what we are giving to our patients, how do we give those medications? Those medications have to be given through a delivery system that will be easy to use by the patient, will require less coordination, will require less uh, steps to take in order to take the right medication. So one of the major challenges that we have today is how do we provide, how do we match the patient needs with the appropriate delivery device to able to have the medication being delivered into the lungs. What advice do you have for healthcare professionals when it comes to diagnosing and treating COPD? And then give us a website where our listeners can learn more. So my advice to diagnose is we have to do a spirometry with, with suspected individuals who are exposed to risk factors, but we have to have a way to diagnose the disease, and the only way is through a spirometry. But that is very important because we have treatment. We can change the natural history of the disease. If we give the patients appropriate therapy, we may be able to block, to limit the progression of the disease and allow the individual to, uh, to receive the maximum benefit from the medications. I would encourage you all to read about the GOAL report to go to www.goldcopd.org. So then you can have all the information on the issue that we discussed today. Doctor, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio and giving us this information. Thank you, Mr. Howard. It was a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Antonio Anzueta. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.